Greetings Python coders, this is Alan D. Moore and in this video I want to talk about one of the fundamental concepts in Python that can very easily trip you up if you don't understand it and that is mutability and immutability of variables. Now if you think those words sound like something from the comic book world and maybe you skimmed over or skipped over those parts in whatever Python textbook or tutorial you were learning Python from, you would be totally forgiven because those are not terms that we use in our day-to-day -day language very often and honestly this concept does not seem very applicable to just you know writing a script and getting something done. However, if you don't understand this you are very likely to have some problems in your code that you're not going to be able to easily debug. So let's look at this script that I have here. x equals hello world. Now if you've taken a class in C or C++ or some kind of basic computer science class, you may have a mental model in your head of how this line of code is executed. And it goes something like this. Um, x is pointed at some location in the computer's memory and then these letters in the string are sequentially added into that memory in their numeric form of course until we get to the end of the string and then a null character or some other terminator character is put on the end to indicate the end of the string and it's basically just an array of characters in memory so that if you wanted to change, say, the second character, you could say x subscript 1 equals a, okay? If you were to run that in Python, you would get an error. And it says something that you wouldn't expect. It says string, str, object does not support item assignment. So why is that? Well, the reason is that the way this works in Python is not the way that you have it in your head that it works. When I create a string literal like this, I'm actually creating a string object. All right, so that's not just the data, not just the, the characters, but actually an object that contains methods and properties which contains this string of characters. Then I am pointing the variable name x at that object. Okay? The string object or the string class has no methods which allow you to manipulate the string of characters that it contains. So there is no way to change the actual characters that live inside of a string object. That's what makes strings in Python immutable. Now I know what you're saying to me. You're saying, Alan, you're crazy. You're wrong. I can change the characters in that string very easily, right? I can say x equals hi there, right? And that works. Okay, that does work. But let me explain what you did not do. You did not actually change the characters inside of this string object. What actually happened here is that you created a new string object and you gave it the name x. To make an analogy, it's sort of like a game of tag. When we start the game of tag, maybe I'm it and you're not, and so I chase you and then I tag you and now you're it and I'm not. So the title of it started with me and then got moved to you. I didn't change into you, you didn't change into me, we simply took the title that was pointing at one of us and pointed it at a different one. Same thing happens here. When we say x equals hi there, we're not changing the string in this object to a different string, we're actually creating a new object and we're reusing the name x to point to the new object. To see this a little more clearly, we can use a Python function called id. id returns 
the ID of the object that a variable name is pointing at. So if I say print ID X, go over here, you can see that it prints out this very long number, and that very long number is the ID of the variable X, or the object that X points to, I'm sorry. If I do that after I say X equals hi there, you can see these numbers are not the same. What that shows me is that I have created a new object, a new string object, and have simply pointed X at it. So that may seem subtle, but we're going to keep going here and explain why this is important. All right, not every type of variable in Python is immutable. Strings are, numbers are, tuples are, but there are some mutable variable types. For example, the list. So let me make x a list, and we will append an item to the list. Okay, now when we run it, you can see that after appending an item to the list, the list is still the same ID. That's because lists are mutable, and when we call the append method, we're not actually creating a new list object. We're simply appending something. We're simply altering that list. We're mutating the list, adding a new item to it. Okay, and that will not change no matter how many items we append to it. Let's run that. Once again, even after appending three items to the list, it's still the exact same list. Now, that doesn't mean that a list is always going to be the same. What happens if we say x equals x dot, oh, let's say sorted x. All right, so if we are going to sort the list by passing it to the sorted method, what happens then? Now notice what's happened here. This third ID number is different. If you can't see that it's in these middle digits here. We have a new list object. Now why did that happen? I thought lists were mutable. They are, but we used an assignment operator. Whenever you use an assignment operator with a variable, you're taking this label, this variable name, you're pointing it to whatever object is evaluated over here on the right. So sorted x actually creates a new list object that has been sorted, and it returns that. So now our, our variable name x is going to point to that new list. If I were to do something on the right that didn't generate a new object, for example, I could just say x equals x. In that case, it's going to stay the same. So it's not simply a question of using the assignment operator. It's using the assignment operator with some sort of expression that would create a new list object. OK, so how would this actually impact our code? How might we get messed up with this? Well, let me show you a common situation in which people get confused um, because of mutability and immutability. So right here I have a function. And in the function definition, I pass in an item. I have a list that defaults to a blank or empty list. And I have a string that defaults to an empty string. Inside my function, I append the item to whatever list was passed in. Remember, the default is an empty list. And then I append the item to the string and then I print them both. 
So then down here I'm calling the function three times, a, b, and c. Now in each case I'm not passing in a list or a string, so you would expect that each time it's going to use the default, which is an empty list and an empty string. Let's run this application. Now notice the output. Every time the function is run, the string, like we expected, simply prints out the character that was passed in because it's appended every time to an empty string. But for some reason, our list is growing every time. That doesn't make any sense because, well, you know, we're supposed to be creating an empty list every time. But that's not actually how Python functions work. When I create this function, these default values are being created. So this default list is actually a list object that's being created and stored as the default value for that argument of the function. Likewise, we create this empty string object and it's being stored as the default value for this argument. Inside the function, we mutate the list by, add, by calling its append method. But what happens with the string? We actually, we're using plus equals, which is just shorthand for string plus item, right? When we add two strings together, that's actually creating a new string object altogether. That is then returned here to this variable. So this variable now points at a new string object. This initial value that was stored with the function definition is not altered. It's still an empty string. So every time we're going to end up with a new value. But the list, on the other hand, every time it's going to have a new value appended, every time we call this function, this list will get one more item. And because it's still pointing to the same object, that object is not becoming an empty list every time. This is why you will see default arguments that look like this, okay? So this is why we do this. When we have a mutable object that we want to be a default value, we will just use none there usually, and then we'll do a check inside the function to say, okay, if nothing was passed in, then use an empty list. Actually, it should be like that. That would be a little bit more explicit. So now when we call this, it behaves as we expect. Okay, another example could be used with classes. So I've created a class here called my class, and I've created a class property which is called log, and it just points to an empty list. Then I've created a method called write log that appends a message to the log. So what we would expect is that any instance of my class can write to this class variable. This variable is shared among all instances of the class. So when I create an object A, my class, and then object A, write log hello. Okay, so that should put hello into uh, the class variable, the class list variable. Then I create object B from my class. Okay, um, and we'll print out object B log. And then, and I'll tell you what, we'll go ahead and comment out all of this. And let's just run that. All right, so there you go. You can see that because that's a class variable, it's a mutable class variable, and it's shared by all instances of my class. Even though I wrote to the log on class A, it actually stored it in the log that's used by class B because it's the same list object, okay? Let's, let's check its ID. So my class 
log will print out its ID. And then we will print object B dot log. And you can see those are the same ID. It's the same object in both cases. However, what happens if we reassign log to an empty list? Oops. And then write to it. Let's find out. Now, something has happened here. Because now we've used the assignment operator on log, but object B dot log is set to this brand new empty list object, which we've written to, and it says world. But object A log is still this shared log from the class. So we might think right here, we, we might have done this to say clear the log. We might think that that's what we're accomplishing, is to clear out the log. But that's not actually how it works. Uh, what we've just done is masked this class property with an instance property called log. So if we actually had wanted to clear out that uh, that log, you know, we might need a clear function instead. All right. So now if we try that. We can see that now we're still using the same log. Because we called a mutable function or a mutable method of the log list instead of reassigning it. So the takeaway from all this is simply this. You need to understand which variable types are mutable and immutable as you're working with them. You need to understand when you are replacing the actual object versus mutating a mutable object. A lot of times, if you fail to do this, you're going to have strange bugs that don't make a lot of sense to you. But having a firm understanding of mutability and immutability will help you avoid these kind of bugs. Hope that's been helpful. Again, this is Alan D. Moore. Please check out the description. I've got some links to some books I've written and uh, some other content that I have that will help you learn to be a better Python coder. So thanks again. Happy coding. God bless.